Hi everybody, Flyerwiz here. It's been a while since we talked about the engine. The last time we did, about five months ago, the editor looked like this. And now it looks like this. There's obviously been a lot of progress since then, and I've realized that up until this point, if you've only watched my full-length videos and not any of my TikToks or shorts, I haven't actually shown much about the game engine slash metaverse framework I've been talking about. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Instead of me just listing out every small change listed in the git commits like I was going to, we're going to walk through the process of how to go from an empty project to getting something to load on the client. Uh, you can even follow along if you want. And I promise I totally didn't code in a bunch of extra stuff as I wrote this script to make it look like a streamlined and bug-free process. First off, we're going to need a GLTF model as the centerpiece. So far, I've been using a robot head I downloaded from Sketchfab that was originally from the Unity demo, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to be downloadable anymore. So we're going to go with this cyberpunk car instead. Alex, that, that's a gun. Yes. There it is. First, uh, using the editor, we create a new project, set the name and directory. This is actually one of the main changes since the last time I showed off the editor. I don't think I actually drew attention to it, but originally I was building the editor like a dedicated client for a Web 2.0 app where everything is stored on a server. While this worked just fine and really helped me nail down the networking code, it was really slowing down development and would have caused a lot of issues for things like teams trying to work on something together. So I refactored the entire engine pipeline to now store projects locally, and you only need to upload assets once you're ready. Once the project is created, first I'm going to drag in that GLTF model from earlier. When we click back to the editor, we should see that it has found it and automatically created and linked a new assembly asset. In my engine, assemblies are basically the same thing as prefabs in Unity. If we double click this to open it, we won't actually see anything yet. This is because I don't have a default material system set up yet, so we're going to have to create some manually. Next we create a single material, double click it once it's created, and set the vertex and fragment shaders to the ones we just created. And now it's ready to go. Also while we're here, I do want to show off that we already have the editor scanning materials for all of their inputs, outputs, uniforms, buffers, etc. Right now if you want to change the color of something, you have to actually go into the shader code itself and edit it. But in the future, we'll use this scanning system so the editor can detect and let you set material properties like textures and color instead of using the static setup I currently have. Now let's open up the assembly again. On the right over here, we have a drop-down list of all the assets that this assembly relies on. Since the engine is built around streaming, an asset that relies on another asset just stores an easily accessible list of all the assets that it relies on. And in the assembly's case, one of the asset types that it can rely on is materials. So a really easy way to find and set all the materials on a model is just to go through this list and set all of them. Now that we can actually see our model, let's just rotate it to a more natural position. Next up, we're going to add some extra colors. To do this, I'm going to duplicate the fragment shader we already made three times. Once for a body color, a window color, and an accent color. Opening one of these, we see the default script is super simple because I've tried to abstract away as much of the shader code as possible so it's easier to get one up and running fast. Don't worry, I will have documentation so if you want to write one from scratch, you can. There are two provided functions you can call. One is Shade Diffuse, which is your run-of-the-mill default uh, engine rendering script. And the other is Shade PBR, which as you can guess from the name, is a PBR shader. I won't be showing that one off though because it requires a custom vertex shader for passing the camera position. Ooh, we're not going to show you how to do PPR. Ooh, join the Discord. To change the color, all we need to do is edit this vector that we pass into the function. Eventually, this will be a material property, and we'll be able to set it in the editor and just be able to use the same shader everywhere, but we're not that fancy yet. For the body, I'm going to set this to a dark gray, and for the window, a darkish blue. For the accent color, though, I'm just going to delete the shading function, just get rid of that, and pass in a neon yellow, since that's as close as we can get to an emissive material at this point. Going back to the editor, we create three new materials for each of our new shaders, and then just set the fragment shaders uh, appropriately. Now when we open up the model again, instead of setting the materials through the dependencies panel like we did before, instead we can click around and find the exact object that we want to set. When we set one, it should set all the other objects as well, because behind the scenes, all the objects that use the same material are asking the assembly what material they should use and not directly referencing it themselves. Next, let's add some lights. Right now we're just using the janky built-in editor light, but if we want to be able to see things on the client side, we're going to need to add some to the assembly itself. So we're going to turn off the scene light just by turning it to black. Then I'm going to add three new entities and rename them to something intelligent. Not scientifically possible! Next. Uh, <clears throat> 
Next, add a... Next, we add an... Uh... Next, we add a point light component to each one, then proceed to color them artistically. <laughs> now that we have a cool looking model, we just need to add it to a chunk so we can actually load on the client. Most other game engines are built around loading scenes, where when you want to send the player to a new level or place, you just tell the engine to switch scenes, you get a small loading screen, and everything changes. However, mine works differently. Since in the long run, I want people to be able to seamlessly link their worlds together, even if they're running on different servers. To do this, instead of of using scenes, we use what I call world chunks, or chunks for short, where instead of everything, it's only meant to contain a small chunk of a larger game world. This will make it a lot easier to handle things like LODs and unload things that you can't currently see. Plus, it makes it so that when you load into a world, you only really need to download one chunk, and maybe the few that are closest to it, instead of the entire thing. To make one, we just right click like with the shaders and choose to create a chunk. Right now they're still super simple. On the right here we can set an assembly and on the left we can set the LOD range to show it in. Let's quickly set our model assembly and we are now ready to go on the project side. The next step is to upload all of this to an asset server. Eventually I will have one built into the editor for debugging but for now we just have to use a separate executable. To do this, make sure your server is up and running, and then open up the sync window from the menu bar and log in. By default, there is an admin account with the password set as password. Once logged in, the editor and the server will compare assets to see which ones have been updated, and then you can just press the upload button to update the ones that you want to update. Do that real fast, and we can move on to the next tab. This is where we set server settings. Obviously, there will be more here soon, but for now there is one very important field, and that is the default chunk field. This just sets where we want players to load in when they first join the server. For now, we'll just set it to the chunk we just created. Now, there's just one more thing. The last tab of this window is where you manage users. I haven't fully decided how I'm going to handle keeping track of players, especially over different servers and stuff. So for now, you just manually add them using this. Finally, now that we've created everything we need and we've set our server to be able to stream our project and test it out, every one of the Brain Engine executables has a config file. For now, this is where you set the log and info for the client. It's extremely insecure, but until I figure out an actual system, this is how it is. Set the info to whatever you set for the test user and run the client. Given that everything is set up right, the server is running, and I fixed that race condition that crashed the client about 35% of the time, uh, you should now see the model slowly stream in. That's the engine so far. You basically just saw every feature that it has. Now that I've gotten the large, here's what I've done in five months update out of the way, I can finally switch to doing smaller, more more detailed updates every two weeks or so. Given that I can actually get myself to write these scripts on time uh, and not spend a couple of days figuring out why my PBR shader math isn't even working, even though I have confirmed it is perfect multiple times over the course of like seven hours only to figure it out that you can't actually grab a raw translation from a camera matrix and you just need to pass it separately and then everything is just gonna work on the first time, magically. If you want to support the further development of Brain Engine and help us eventually build a game studio, the easiest thing you can do is press the like button to fuel the algorithm and my analytics addiction. Past that, there is a link to our Patreon, Discord, and assorted social media, and eternal gratitude in the description. Until next time.